the black brother and to the wiser heads and told him you should not go ahead with that. Tell us about your involvement in the Trans as best you can recall. Well, really, it was much more a trade union thing than anything else. Because that was the only factor there that didn't was particularly obnoxious that a person could not assist a person on strike, or he would laugh. I mean, I, you tell a mother she gives her son a plate of food and he's on strike, and therefore she's com committing a crime. I mean, I mean that was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah. And he was told so, but he wouldn't listen. So he went ahead and passed his law. But the trade unions had been holding meetings for a long time about this. So we went to the house. I knew we were going to vote against him, talk against him. But before we had time to even reach there, we heard the sound of bullets shot at. And then I went out. Oh, did somebody come and tell me the house? That the man who was suffering was dead, a body was dead. Is it Timothy? Yes, and I didn't know who he was, but there was a body, a person had died, and he was lying down on the third floor or something. So I got up and said that, in, in fact, we have seen what Dominicans are against this law in the past today. I understand a man, a dead man, is lying on the floor downstairs. Shouldn't we adjourn Parliament and go and discuss this thing before we continue with this thing? No, 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 we must continue. That was the inquiry. We must go ahead, we must go ahead. So I walked out of the house then. Did Michael Douglas follow you? I think, I think only because he was at that time in the opposition. Michael Douglas was your godson, some people have said he no, was. No, his, his sister is my godson. Okay. Yeah. Do I, I don't want to live up in America. I don't okay. know any of you. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. So, I believe from Michael Douglas. So all of us have come walked out. The first time I even walked out of the house. But I couldn't see that people could have so demonstrated, so protested, as a result a man has died and you're continuing the matter as if nothing has happened. I thought that was crazy, don't you? Oh, oh yes. Were the glasses in the building broken by that time? No, not. They didn't break the parliament. The, uh, parliament the other side. The other side yes. I didn't know that yet, but I had heard the shots and I knew there was a man, a body of a man who had been killed. So by, when you when you left, when you were getting out of the building, what did you say? What did I say? Well, see, would you see anything? No, the people were scattered by then because they'd seen bullets fired. So I walked out, went to my car, and I drove home. Okay. At that time... And they continued with the house and passed the law. Were you, were you personally afraid at that time for your safety? Or? No, I didn't think there was Have you always been a brave person? Well, I didn't think anybody had a reason to want to kill me, that sort of thing. You know, I, didn't, I wasn't frightened of that. Did the defense force look at you in any way, talk to you, threaten you at that no, time? I didn't even see them. They were further down the street. Okay. So where did you go from there? Right there. I went back to my office. At 7, at 8.15. Uh, Miss Charles? At 7.15. 7.15, actually. Miss Charles, we were talking about the May 29th riot and what happened on that day, but I'm sure you'll agree there were several events which preceded that. Yes. Um, one of them being the list port crisis and the other being the free port crisis. Can you, for the for, the for this crisis was the worst. Tell us about that. There we found a government who was prepared to give away almost half of the country to an American who we knew nothing about, you know, we had no we had seen one of his credentials, and the, and the way it was worded... You were from Texas, wasn't it? I think so. And the way it was worded, it would have meant that a Dominican born would have had to get a pass to enter that part of the island. That to me was horrible. And uh, had the Labour Party... What, what was the Labour Party's rationale for the uh, entire uh, Freeport proposal. It was to bring industry to Dominica, and they thought they would have an oil refinery there. Now, we're talking 1979. Mm -hmm. Dominica is now an independent country. Yes. Uh, we kind of skipped the independence debates, and I remember them very well as being very heated debates. Um, before we talk about the independence debates, so can you tell us about the list for crisis and what that, what that crisis, we're talking about the issues surrounding the pre-May 79 events in Dominica. Tell us about the list for crisis. Well, 
there seemed to us no reason to have a use for crisis since a lot of money was being spent on withstanding the use for And that was, a, right. that was a disease of the banana yeah. industry, which would kill the banana industry easily. But in fact, I think that nobody was paying attention to it. And since bananas were the most major crop in Dominica, you had to pay attention to the disease that might destroy it, because the farmer was paying some subvention to this, and therefore they should, it should be used to ensure and to protect his crop. And this was not being done, and we couldn't understand why. Tell me what kind of role that people like Alvin Andre and Ati Martin and uh, Mr. Honeychurch, uh, what was his first name? Ted. Ted Honeychurch. So what kind of role did they play in the list? Well, they, they looked after the farmers, point of view. they were the farmers' voices in that respect. Was that the Dominica Farmers Union, DFU? Well, the, one of them, I think, Martin was DFU, but they were, apart from that, they were in the banana associations and they were, they were quarreling about the neglect of the banana business. Okay. So, how did the they... farmers were uncomfortable with the way in which the government was looking after their affairs. Mm -hmm. Then they came up now with the fact that they wanted to sell half the country to an American. That's a free point. But yes. With Don dollars a year, I think it was, or something. Yes. But what was worse is that the Dominican would not have been able to enter that area without a pass. So, you're saying to me that they would have given them autonomy then? Yes, they would have had such control of the land that if you wanted to go in there, you'd have to get a pass to go in there. I mean, this is to me a frightening thing, that anybody should have a pass to go into their own part of their, their own country. At that time, did the Freedom Party ally itself with um, the so-called Dominican left, the Popular Independence Committee? No, we didn't so. ally ourselves. We came out, we had the same ideas, we spoke out in each case. And you spoke on the same platforms and so on? I'm not sure that we spoke on the same platform. But we spoke on the same platforms with the union sometimes when they wanted to pass a law that if unions went, if a union member that was on strike was assisted by a non member, that the non member would have committed a crime. That we spoke out against. But I couldn't see a mother suffering because she'd given her son lunch when he was on strike. Let me talk to you about the independence debates which would have preceded that in 1977-1978. Were you against Patrick John's request for no, independence? I was never against independence. I said that before we become independent, we must make sure that Britain gives us what we require to be able to stand on our own feet. Okay. I have studied what had happened in, the, in um, Fiji and, and the other country there, and I said that they had had a shopping list and they had received the benefit of that shopping list, and we must have a shopping list. A lot of the things we're doing still now should have been done at that time. Do you believe that the independence question was one that would have been approached by Britain anyway, even if Dominica had not Britain it? wanted to get us off their hand. There's no doubt at all about it. Why do, you see, why do you say I've spoken to people since. They realized, with the way in which Patrick John was going, that there would be trouble in that part of the world, and they didn't want to be in charge at the time. Was it also there was a talk in the United Nations that it should be a freedom for anybody who wanted it, you see. Was you, would, you, would you consider that Dominic was being a drain on Britain's uh, economy? Not really. They just didn't want any problems, or rather they would have to answer for. How much of the foreign exchange support was Britain giving to Dominic in 77, 78, if you know? I don't remember offhand. But so that, wasn't the, that wasn't the big problem. I also felt that the people of the country had a right to know what they were going to get as a result of independence. Just don't tell them I'm going to be independent, hurrah, hurrah, I put a flag, a new flag up. What am I going to get? Are we going to have better education for our children? Or are people going to go further? There was not, none of those answers were there, and I was worried about it. At that time, you were in Parliament? Yes. With uh, Mr. Moise and Mr. Hanachek? That's right. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, Patrick John sometimes looked at your opposition to independence as being part of your colonial training. Uh, well, how do you but I was never in opposition to independence. I just wanted to get the things that were necessary to make sure as an independent country we could do the things that our people required. What's the fun of being independent in name and you, you can't go to shop in any shop? You know? How do you believe the independent debates, independence debates were handled by the likes of people like Vic Rivera and Francis and uh, the other... Uh, they showed their ignorance as far as I was concerned. They weren't concerned. They were only concerned that the party should get what the party said they wanted. The world concerned with what is Dominica's benefit in the future. And that's what I was interested in. Did, did your government ever make um, a 
uh, let's say, have the tapes of those debates transcribed so that Dominicans can hear the quality of, uh, of discourse that took place during that very important period? I don't think we have, but we, it's not. I don't think we've ever been able to get them, I have a feeling, if those are tapes that we never made. The, they talk about hand size. Hand size yes, are... I don't know that they were hand size at that time. The times when they, you had, that you didn't get the hand size. Okay. When, when, how are the hands? Hand sides are basically transcribed. Yes, first of all, they're taken by stenographers, but they're also taped. Mm -hmm. So it's in order can, you know, relate to the tape to see if it's correct. Mm -hmm. But they don't always print them out. You know? They don't always print them out. So you're saying now that, um, because I, I, I mentioned that question, it's kind of technical, but I know that a lot of people really don't know the sort of quality or lack thereof of discussion that was had. Yeah. On and you know, when I decided to do, in fact, when we went to Britain, I told, I, I made the British told the American government that they must give me the right to speak on the radio about independence, because I had my ideas to put forward the people and they should go forward. Of course, it didn't allow it. I have a whole about seven letters I'd write to the BBS to ask for permission to do a broadcast. I would send them the tape of what I was going to say before, mm -hmm. or a written thing, and they would write and say, We regret that you can't be allowed to speak on the radio. Can you give My me precious any, possessions, always. Can you give me any particular vignette or instance of government high handedness during that time that gave you cause for concern? Well, that was one of them. I mean, they, they agreed with the British that I should be allowed to talk on the radio. Who also. ran the radio station? You all it belongs to the government, and the government controlled it completely. And who were the And I would write to the manager. Who are the managers? And the manager is the man who's manager again now. What's his name again? Is that Dennis Joseph? That's right. What about Cody and Frampton? What role did he play? He was also working there. Were they right. civil servants or were they party appointees? Well, it was, they were. They were you not know, being civil servants, but they were servants at the radio station, which was run by the government, but not necessarily a civil service job. You know. Do you believe that they operated with a degree of objectivity? No, or no, they no. They didn't understand anything about the fact that you freedom of the press. They didn't understand those words at all. And at one time, when I brought in a, a report on a convention we held in Casa Luz, without even looking at it or the content of it, Put in front and told me, I will not put anything on the radio concerning the Freedom Party. Just like that. Okay. And I had no regrets. What are the other, let's say, elements of style of Patrick John, then Premier, that caused you to be concerned for the future of Dominica? Well, he wasn't concerned with Dominica, that was what bothered me. That he was concerned with his own position in aggrandizing, but he wasn't concerned that. I mean, if he had been, he'd have listened to what I was saying that it was necessary before we became independent to get Britain to give us the things we require to run the country. What, for instance, are those things? Roads. I mean, I wouldn't have had to come in and do the environment in the World Bank to do the roads if they listened to me. There were schools that required to put in places. Do you believe that uh, Britain orders those things after all these yes. years? Yes. And right. they had done it for other countries and had seen the example. So I realized that we could get them. But in fact, here was a government begging Britain to let them go. So you're saying we Britain should... realized that that government, if allowed in, would give them trouble and they would have to answer perhaps to the United Nations. So they let them go. So you're saying the government was lobbying hard for independence without getting certain what you consider they were, they, they didn't ask for anything in exchange. What did Britain offer us as a gift or grant? Oh, the same way giving everybody else 10 million pounds, 5 million grant, 5 million loan. Is that all we got? That's right. That's all. Like I got in the five million grand had been spent. I am very surprised at that, uh, about the paucity of, of uh, means being displayed. But that's what they've given to every country. And if you were like, rushing for independence, why did they have to give you more? You had to ask for more. Were you concerned about the defense force and the fact that Patrick John was now a colonel in that defense force? Well, he's colonel in the Ghana army, I always thought. He came back from Ghana with his colonel. When he started wearing a uniform to yes, and events, what was what he your... couldn't wear a, a sword because the swords are too long, but he's short height. <laughs> That's a rather interesting comment. I guess it's appropriate anyway. Mm -hmm. Let me ask then about uh, the uh, 
link between Patrick John and his investors in Texas. What do you believe that link really meant? Was that a link of bona fide businessmen interested in investment and the government interested in development, or was that something that may have had to do with personal aggrandizement? I think he genuinely wanted to create more jobs in the country because that would make his own people satisfied with him. But he didn't care how he did it or whether it could be done the way he was doing it. And certainly, you don't give away half your country to a foreigner whom you've never heard of. You don't know what he stands for. You don't know where his standing is in the world. You know, you don't have his his biography. You Don, know Don Pearson, did you ever hear about him again? Did the FBI, no. CIA ever tell us who this guy no, really was? No. What was the relationship between Don Pearson and the Purdue group who later came to Dominica? Who had tried to come to Dominica, I, I should say. Anyway. Or the people who were... Um, Mike Purdue. And Purdue and those people. I, I never heard there was any connection between them. Okay. And they weren't interested in land. They were interested in, in an army, in a cocaine factory, and a few things like that. The Purdue group? Or yes, and the legitimacy of being belong, being head of a country which was part of the World Bank, part of the United Nations, etc. You know. So did Pearson ever try to sue the government of Dominican British contract later on when he became Prime Minister? No, I never heard of him. When so I once the Freeport thing fizzled, you yeah. never heard from him again? No. I don't know the other, the government, Patrick John's government heard from him, but I never heard about him again. Once the riot took place, and let's get back to the riot, and you went to your office, what next did you do as a leader of the Freedom Party to uh, well, we had meetings around the country, talk to people, tell them what we thought and what had happened. Did you do that alone or in consort with other no, groups? No, with the, with the, sometimes, I think after the riot, we would have talked perhaps sometimes with, with the unionists on the platform. And what about the DLM, the Dominican Liberation Movement? That came about at that time, did it not? No, no. The DLM was the Fallers, and they long the Fallers. It was part of the Black Power Movement. Well, it was part of the Black Power Movement, but they yeah. changed the name around the time. They, yeah. right. It's Ron Green. I don't Green, remember them at all. Ron Green, Matthew Mate, uh, uh, Rosie Douglas, Mike Douglas, these people. Oh, yes, I remember that. Mm -hmm. No, they didn't really go along with that. They did their own thing, mm -hmm. which was a good thing because it meant that people could hear several different voices on the subject. There are people who think that during the course of the disturbances that there was a move by the police and defense force to seize power. Have you ever heard about that? Yes, sir, I knew that. I've always known that some of them had planned. They thought that we were taking too long to make a decision. Because with all the talk of the three weeks while the country was closed down, we were determined to have a constitutional decision not to do it outside of it, as much as possible, keep within the Constitution. Were you trying to make sure that you didn't set a precedent? No, I was thinking, I was thinking that if we're going to do it, we just have any, we, let us do it properly. It's not so long since we have had our new Constitution. We work hard in getting it. Let us live within it. Let us so you're saying it. you're trying to protect and preserve process. Right? That's right. And what, of, of, in, in, in the life of the developing country, how important in your mind is process? I think it's important, even though if you follow the law, you follow the pattern. And that was why when they wanted me to, well, some of the people wanted me to lead the country, I said, no, I was not elected by the, by the population to be head of the government. So we had to find somebody in the Labour Party to lead, because they were elected by the population. I see. And that was what it was my reason that I would not do it. A lot of people thought I was trying to get to lead. I, I didn't want to lead that much. I wanted Dominica to be a peaceful place where people could express their views and run their lives. Yes. How would you assess the different figures in the Labour Party around that time, uh, other than Patrick John? You've talked about Patrick John. Well, I mean, for But let's start with Patrick John. What, were you think, what do you think were the, 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 the flaws in his character which caused his downfall? He believed in flattery. Flattery was his main... He wanted to be flattered, and he was Give an example. filled with flattery. Told him he was a great man, he'd believe it, not realizing he had anything to be called a great man. And all he wanted, I mean, the people who flattered him were the people he wanted around him. Who didn't flatter him, don't come here. What about a doctorate? Did you hear at one point he was a doctor? Who, do you know where he got that doctorate yes. from? I think it's when he was in prison, I already got his doctorate, you know. Well, wasn't he a doctor of metaphysics before independence? I think so, but I, I, I just thought with another, another Patrick Reeves, you know. Mm -hmm. So flattery was a flaw. Seriously. Do you think he had good advice? What about the role of Leo Austin or the others? Well, he had bad advice. 
And I don't think he was even taking the bad advice. He was just doing things on whims and fancies of posting some leaving flattery. But who were his advisors, we should correct? Well, Austin was his main advisor because when... Like the he, Attorney General? Yes. The guy he's gone? Well, this, he called me and told me, well, you've got what you want. Because the crowd had been shouting that morning, um, Leo Austin must go. So he rang me and told me, well, the PM has told me that I must resign. That's Leo Austin. So I told him, it's too late now, the PM must resign. I see. That's how far he didn't run by that. Do you know how Leo passed on? He died here in the States. Mm -hmm. He wanted to come back out to Dominica. And the, the American authorities wrote me. I told him, no, he's not a Dominican. He's a Guyanese. So send him back to his homeland. Don't send him back to Dominica. Was he here as a refugee or something? No. I don't know how he got here, quite frankly. Perhaps he was a refugee. Yeah. But I said that he was not a Dominican and must not come back to Dominica. He must go back to Guyana, which is his homeland. Yes. Which what is about, true. What about he had never had a passport, you know, a Dominican passport. I see. Because he had been made to give up his... Um, Guyanese. You no, know, this was a special passport you get. Permit? A cup, you know, um, I used to carry one once so myself. Diplomatic? Diplomatic passport. But I, I had made him give it to him because it was owing him him as Attorney General. Yes. So he went to me and stopped me Attorney General. So he had to get, so I said, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. What about Senator Jojo Karam? What is your assessment of him as an advisor? He was a senator. Oh, and you, I who would take Jojo Karam as advice. Had you known Jojo growing up? Yes. I mean, he was he born in Dominica? Me, yes. I mean, I mean, born in Dominica, I don't know, but he lived, his father lived near us. You knew him as a boy then? Yes. Yes. What kind of person was he growing up? I don't even know. I don't remember. I see. What about Eustace Francis as a... Uh, Eustace Francis was a mischievous person. Evil person. What about... Uh, he, he wanted power for power's sake. What about um, the first to resign uh, following the shooting, um, O.J. Serafin? I think O.J. Serafin was frightened for himself and he wanted... Me out of it. I don't think he was genuinely against what Patrick was doing. So I don't think he had any authority to stop Patrick anyway, quite frankly. There's a person who's related to me who's an uncle who we uh, always thought uh, was uh, someone somewhat oddly placed. But what was your assessment of H.L. Christian and, and his, his role in this entire thing? Well, I think he should have got out of it partly long before he did. He did get out of it. I mean, one of the party got out of the, uh, the government one time. But I think he should have seen one of the times that he spoke in the house, and I was almost ashamed of him because I had a lot of respect for him. And he um, he said he was so pleased that Patrick was going to have a son, and he would be the next leader of Dominica. All that was said by Asian Christian. I said, no man, he, he, don't, he had no right to be saying that. He shouldn't be in that that too. You know what I mean? So I was a little disappointed in him. I think he should have got out before because he must have seen the things that we were seeing outside in Patrick. I suppose. When the end finally came for Patrick and he was left alone in the sense that his members crossed the floor mm -hmm. and elected a new member of um, mm -hmm. government, did it was it, a, was it a problem in fashion the government that was balanced between the opposition? Yes, we decided this. All of us in the parliament mm -hmm. sat at this meeting after the Hall and said, that we must look for a Labour Party minister to lead it. Because this is what the people had elected. Yeah. How did Eustace, how did, uh, how did uh, Charles Maynard and uh, Brian Aline come to feature as ministers? How difficult or so was that? Quite difficult because we, we all of us sat down together and we said, well, they wanted to put Michael as, I said, no, I will not agree to Michael being. You're talking about Michael Douglas? No, I said, I will not allow him to be Prime Minister. Definitely not. He knew better. The same as Patrick, he do the same thing again. Michael was very annoyed at me, but instead of dying, people were talking frankly. We had gone through so much that anybody was talking frankly. And they said, so I said, yes, let's put Sarah in. Yes. What about you? What about um, Artie Martin and. Um, well, they weren't in the evening in the house. They hadn't been elected at but the time. He was placed as Agriculture Minister. Yeah, he was being a, a senator, though. Yes, right? senator, yes. So he couldn't be prime minister. Yes. He had to be an elected member to be prime minister. Was there any difficult? I remember Ati Mata, Rosie Douglas, and uh, Pierre Charles were made senators. 
Mm -hmm. The idea was to, to, it, to bring all the parties in, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the idea of uh, a joint way of, of getting over the difficulties. And so we made Seraphine Prime Minister. I had no hopes of Seraphine, but it wasn't for so long. In a year's time, there had to be elections. There are people who say that that was the first time that the United States involved itself and in, involved itself in normally in local politics in the amount of money that seemed to have been available for the 1980 election. What is your view on that? I don't think the Americans helped us. There are some people who thought that uh, the Americans... So I think did this by publishing himself in pictures in all America with people like that because he thought that was the way to win the election. Well, you know, he lost the election, he didn't even win his seat, you remember? Yes. There are people who said that there was a blimp, or a, you know, a Goodyear blimp. Yes, he had a blimp running yeah. around. But I think I was paid for by Norris Privo. Norris Privo? Mm -hmm. I think it was his idea and his, his pocket. Was Norris Privo in the Labour Party at that time? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, but well, he know. supported Seraphine anyway. I yes, can't yes. tell you what party was in when he supported Seraphine. Yes. And he, I think he was right because he thought Seraphine was weak and stupid and he will do what he liked with him. I think right to think that, but Seraphine didn't last long enough for that. But Michael Douglas always said of Seraphine that he must be ignorant for him to not even have been able to win his own seat. Yeah. All the money he had, all the money he spent, he could have bought each vote yes. in, in Salisbury. There are people who thought that uh, you were angry at some point because the Americans seemed to favor O.J. Charlie Shelton was the ambassador. That well, Charlie was. Shelton was the ambassador to King. He was the head of state. I think what the Americans are so glad that they settled down business and not exploded any more than that. So they would accept whatever we had we had done, you know. But I don't think um, I don't think that Charlie Shelton was helped to bring anything more. They may have given a little more money to, to Dominica because they felt that they must help us to stay steady and. They don't want us to erupt again, you know that sort of thing. But they don't know what's happening down the world today. The Americans never know what's happening in the part of the world. We had that hurricane David August 29th, right after yes, the right. overthrow. And of course the Americans were very annoyed at us because Seraphine went in and took the the material they had put there to help to build nice. things and we took it. So I think that we lost out on that. That's right. The Cubans offered some scholarships and a hospital at that time, and there are some people who thought that we had to reject the hospital and just take 11 of the 100 scholarships because of American pressure. Mm -hmm. There was no American pressure on that. I wasn't in, in, in government then, but um, there was no American pressure, and they took scholarships, because they'd been taking scholarships before through the Labour Party. And when I complained, the, the, the ambassador came and spoke to me and told me that we wanted to give you scholarships. I said, well, listen, we have a university of our own. Why don't you pay for all the scholarships in our university? You know? Why don't you have to come and learn Spanish and spend a year learning Spanish before we begin studying? And why do you, why do our people have to learn Marxism and Leninism even though they're going to grow chickens? What do you go, I mean, you're going to feed them with Marxism corn, you know? <laughs> and things of that sort, so. But the, um, What is the response about? He says, oh, we, it isn't Cuba, that gives, it isn't the Cuban government that gives the scholarships. I said, oh, who does? And how do they get in there with all your strict rules in Cuba? Oh, it's the, it's the Communist Party. I said, there's a difference? I didn't know that. They know the difference between the Cuban government and the Communist Party. <laughs> okay, was that, was that uh, Ambassador, uh, uh, what's that? I don't know Okay. Now, the, the, even the he still, he still reached me a long last friend when he sees me. Yes. And so he bought the dream. Yes. The event that thrust Dominica into the world uh, spotlight was the 1983 Grenada uh, event, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, others, uh, many people consider an intervention, some consider an invasion. Interestingly, the Americans can call it invasion themselves. Mm -hmm. But but tell us about that and tell us what you knew of Maurice Bishop before that event. Well, I met Maurice Bishop when he came to Dominica and was called at the bar. I didn't know him very well. We had had a meeting in the August of that year, which he was to attend an OECS meeting. And he he booked a hotel room. He had his soldiers guarding his room for three days, but he only arrived the morning of the last day and left that same afternoon. So all that was too much show for me. But I remember that. Uh, so you were saying he was very concerned about security? Yes. Maybe too much so. That's right. right. But uh, uh, during the, the meeting, we had a 40 meeting. I had small luncheons at my home, so that people could talk. You have a big dinner, you have a speech made, you don't really talk. 
So I would invite perhaps two heads, myself and Blatter, your, your advisor, so we could talk intimately on the subject of conservatism. And Morris should have been at one of those luncheons, but we hadn't come. But so the last day he was there, I invited him to lunch anyway, and I was having people like the present Prime Minister of St. Lucia.